We are sitting here at Sweet Silent Farms in central New Jersey. I grew up in the home next door, which is a 1790s stone house um, on this pit property. Farming here all my life. And in the area where we are grazing the animals, there had been attempted agriculture there in the early 50s. And it was just allowed to go completely. And so when we came here, it was all uh, red maple saplings. Uh, we had started doing some maple syrup. It would take forever to get from one tree to the other because every year you would have to go through armor plated to get through the uh, wild rose and to prune them and cut them enough so that you could get a tap in and run and straighten your tubing out and get things ready for the season. And it was a disaster. So we ended up getting Barbados blackbelly sheep which is a wonderful breed. There are not very many of them, but they are bulletproof for parasites. So they also have an eating habit similar to goats. And they did a wonderful job of knocking that wild rose down. In this drought, it's fantastic time to have this extra space. This wall of green is a wall of pain. <laughs> This is an invasive species called wild rose. Um, and it, uh, it grows incredibly tall. That area, all through those red maples, looked identical to this. That's the difference between grazing goats and now these sheep. You can see right now what they're eating over there. What that guy is pu pulling down on is wild rose. You know, all the grasses in the Northeast are cool weather grasses. 99% yeah. of it's cool weather grasses. Yeah. So, and with a drought, you can see what the pasture looks like up there. But there's certainly plenty of browse here. And even, bar even the, the Burmese brown top, that, that stilt grass, has a relatively high protein content. It's just we don't have animals that are, that generally we don't have animals that, that eat it. But sheep and goats seem to handle it quite well. When we started this, it was totally invasive species with a trail going through around the edge to get to the sugar bush. And we had a little trail coming up along this way to carry sap up by hand manually. And this area was basically look like that. So all we did was just graze it. Mm -hmm. And the animals have created their own e ecosystem. These, these wild rose bushes were like they were over there. They were up in the trees when we first moved the goats in here. Um, and had to, you know, cut around the edges to be able to run the fencing. And at this point, um, gee, there, there's some that are maybe five feet tall, but there's no eight footers, and they aren't dense like they were. This girl here, 441, is working on some wild rose, and even if she doesn't kill the wild rose. It is so much easier to move through this space in the fall when I'm cleaning up the lines and straightening lines and setting and flushing all the lines. So we're up to about 500 taps at this point. Working the animals in the woods has really made it possible for us with the animals clearing the, the briars out. I mean, it, it keeps the farm going. <laughs>